Well, I am glad that there is a plan, but I would be much more glad if the plan were op were to become operational much faster. As we speak, UNRWA, the largest aid agency in Gaza, is no longer able to assist and protect civilians, especially those who have taken shelter in our schools and in our buildings. We do not have the supplies, we do not have water, clean drinking water, we do not have food, we do not have hygiene kits, and mostly we cannot move safely in Gaza, and that is a prerequisite for aid agencies to be able to carry out their work. We need to be able to move across uh, Gaza safe and not, uh, not be targeted or not have to lose more colleagues. We have so far lost at least 15 colleagues from UNRWA in Gaza. This is a really heavy toll for us. Tamara, we are very sorry to hear, of course, about your colleagues. Tell us about all the civilians that are moving from north to south. Apparently, a nearly a million. What is happening to them? Exactly. Over the last two days, reports of about a million people, that is a sea of people uh, going south, moved using whatever means they could. And given the lack of fuel in Gaza, a lot of them moved by feet. So the images we have been receiving from my colleagues are, are harrowing images of people on their feet walking under uh, airstrikes and air bombings to try to find shelter in a safer area in the middle and southern part of the Gaza Strip. My colleagues in UNRWA also uh, moved south and are now in uh, one of our logistical bases, effectively a warehouse uh, in the south of the Strip. In that warehouse, my colleagues are working, sleeping, um, eating whatever they find with around 6,000 civilians from Gaza who have also uh, joined them uh, in that building. The conditions are very, very difficult. My own colleagues say that in that building, they each have access to one liter of drinking water per day. The situation is really drastic. We have to get aid in. We have to get supplies in. We have to get fuel in. And mostly, all that access has to be safe, therefore guarantees that if my colleagues move in Gaza and across Gaza, they will not die. Very clear, Tamara. We are getting uh, some comments from an Israeli military spokesman who says that no humanitarian ceasefire in Gaza is, has been agreed at, at this stage. Let me ask you to go back to what you were saying. Clearly there is a need for urgent supplies of food, of water, electricity, to keep the hospitals and schools running. W what is the safest way to ensure that this aid does make it into the people and the civilians who need it the most? The safest way is to establish uh, what we call in, human, in the humanitarian wor world a humanitarian cessation of hostilities. This is an agreed window where all parties agree that convoys of aid will be going into Gaza and that whoever receives them, so in that case, UNRWA, my own colleagues, the UN uh, Palestine Refugee Agency, will not be targeted while they're organizing a distribution of water and food. Schools are not running. What we urgently need now is indeed fuel, like you just said, for in, uh, fuel to produce electricity so that the electricity can get our water plant to work so that people can have clean drinking water. Otherwise, we really fear that we're gonna be running out of water. People are gonna be dehydrated, especially babies. This is now our responsibility. It's a moral responsibility to get aid into Gaza soonest.